the live stream is about to start. Just getting set up here. Let's switch it on. Hello. 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 Um, welcome to my day late live stream. Usually I stream on Tuesdays, but today is in fact Wednesday. Uh, I am Mike by Fulco. I am the technical director for thegymnasium.com. We are a free online self-paced video based uh, code design technology tip top shape school where you can go and take our free courses 24-7 uh, on a myriad of subjects having to do with design development and uh, tons of other good stuff. You should go take our courses. I talk about them every week. I'm going to skip most of the spiel for today because I want to get rolling. So. Um, we're going to pick up where we left off on a recent stream, working on our... Oops, that's going to be showing me. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off on a recent stream, working on a storybook for Gymnasium, uh, which looks like this. Storybook, uh, as a reminder, is a um, JavaScript tool uh, for prototyping for the web. It allows you to build components in their atomic form, um, and uh, develop them sort of in isolation from the rest of your interface so that you can um, spend some time making sure that the, the components you're building work independent of where they're implemented uh, and work on a team with designers and developers and do things a little better than, uh, I guess, what you would call the old world of, of developing software. So we're setting up a storybook uh, for Gymnasium to use for our new site, which will hopefully allow us to do everything uh, a little more quickly uh, and do some more experimentation for what will become our front-end um, CMS-driven marketing site. Um, so everything that's not a course on Gymnasium will be driven by, um, well, Storybook and React and Gatsby, and the Storybook is kind of the very first path, or very first step on that path. So um, that's what I'm working on today, and I'm, I'm uh, here for that. So. Let's do it. Uh, okay, so we've got our storybook up and running. If you recall, it looks like this. Um, we, um, the first thing I'm gonna do today is really fuss about with some of the, um, yeah, some of the, the, wow, sorry, gotta get my head on straight here. What I wanna do is update all of our dependencies for the storybook because um, what you're seeing here is the storybook for UI and they released a new one just the other day. So look at that, a new version 500 is available. We don't need to read the, read the change log, but we may. Uh, I've already done that. I'm gonna show you how to update. Um, I ran yarn upgrade interactive dash dash latest, which will give us a list of all of the latest updates to packages that we depend on. Um, there are a number of things here. We're gonna do this in steps. Let me make sure I'm on a good branch. Um, oh yeah, I don't even have this on GitHub yet. That's a problem. We'll do that today as well. So uh, really, the whole process to upgrade Storybook is just to upgrade all the packages related to Storybook. So we're going to do that. And that is a, a process we've done before. Um, It'll update the package.json and send a bunch of node modules or update a bunch of node modules on our device. This does take a minute and like I pretty much always point out slower on stream than it is when I'm not using my streaming tools because they take up some of the RAM on the device and that's okay we can live with that although what I am going to do in the background is shut down slack okay so that was the storybook bits I'm just going to commit those changes so we can back up if we need to update upgrade storybook to 5.x good enough and we'll do some of the other dependencies here while we're in here because it doesn't take long to do Gatsby We'll call that upgrade Gatsby plugins, uh, dips, dependencies. Again, this will take a minute. I 
guess I should have my chat open in the other window here. There it is. Pull open Twitter in case any of you guys are yelling at me there. Okay, so that was our Gatsby dependencies. We're going to stage those changes and put them in. And then the last ones are for React. Very minor changes. Um, I won't even bother going through the change log for these because they are very small. The storybook ones are more exciting, and we can see what those differences look like from within the interface, provided, of course, that it still runs. Okay, so we're going to do yarn storybook, oops, which will run the thing, and I'm going to do upgrade react dependencies as well, because that was all that was changed in this last one, I believe. Yeah, cool. Okay, so we're up to, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, okay, already we're in trouble. Uh, let's take a look at that. Webpack.config.js. Uh, cannot read property module of undefined. Okay. Okay. Default config. It must mean that we're no longer being passed in default config. So, uh, though I thought this was going to be easy, as is often the case, it will not be. So we're going to look at the upgrade documentation. Which we may need to get to on GitHub. I know for a fact that I saw them posting on Medium about this. We can go track those posts down if we need to. But I think let's start with what the error says. We know it's in the Webpack config, so we're going to go into the docs and look for Webpack. So let's just let's just search for Webpack in the docs. Custom Webpack config. Okay, if your file exports an object, it puts storybook into extend mode. So right now we're exporting a function, puts it into full control mode. Storybook will call the function with an object containing config and mode fields. So already we're, we're off here. Config is storybook's default configuration. Okay, that was easy. Are we using env at all? No. Are we using base config? No. Okay. Cool. Uh, and mode allows you to create different configurations for dev and production environments. That's pretty cool. But really all we're doing in here is setting up the CSS modules bit, but I think that might be all I needed to do. So let's try that again. Nope. Not read property rules of undefined. Oh, oh, I see. They come in an object. So that's a change. So 
So config, which we were calling default config. Okay, let's try again. Sweet. Though I don't understand everything I'm doing all the time, it, it is really helpful to be able to read through some of this stuff and just get what's going on here. We actually may even be able to get away with this sort of a setup here, which seems a lot simpler. We'll try that next. As with everything, we try and work with, with small commits here. Yeah, look at that. Okay, this is the new storybook, uh, live and in the flesh, and that's wonderful. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the UI is updated. There's some nice new actions here. It looks cleaner, it's great. Let's, let's commit this because it's working. Uh, update config to work with new storybook. And then the next thing we're gonna do is try and simplify that config. So I have a feeling that if we don't need to go with extend mode, emergency exported object with storybook's default webpack configuration. Oh, that's what we want. Full control mode. Yeah, so edit with fair, with care, sorry, make sure to preserve the following config options. Yeah, okay, let's see, let's see if we can have success with a setup like this, because this is, this is a messy deal. Um, so really what we want to do, th this looks like a standard webpack configuration anyway. Um, so let's, let's try that. So I'm going to just set it up like so. And it will yell at me because I can't have two of those, but that's okay. Module rules is an array of objects. And we're going to do an object here, exclude. And we'll put in this here. And then we're going to put in use. Uh, loaders go in an array Presets. We'll put these two guys in here. Now, very quickly, my understanding of the world of Webpack is falling off here, so this may not work, but that's okay. I, it's worth trying. Uh, we're going to do plugins. Default config that resolved on main fields. Don't really know what that means. Huh. It also sort of sounds like there's someone working on the roof above me, so if you hear that, I apologize. Looks like there's just a resolve bit we can put in here. Module.exports. Resolve. And then main field. 
fields and an array. Okay, let's see if there's anything we've missed. So we've got the default config module rules exclude set. Let's put these comments in here too. So that's done. Loader. Use install Babel loader, which is 8.0 beta. Okay, that may not necessarily be true. Uh, this is presets. Use Babel preset react for JS X and env. And use proposal class properties for arrow functions. We got that. And we'll put this here. <laughs> and then that should do it. Whether or not this works, we're about to find out. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Webpack has been initialized using a configuration object that does not match the API schema. Configuration module rules 9 has an unknown property plugins. I see. Okay, so plugins is in the wrong place. I think it should be like this. Plugins. Module.exports plugins goes here. And presets. Module, I think presets stays under module. Well, let's find out. Nope. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, presets needs to go back. Plugins. Plugins needed to move, apparently. Uh, configuration module has an unknown property presets. Does that go under rules? I'm actually not sure any longer. No, because it's not a rule. Um, let's look at the old code here. So it was config module rules use options plugins oops wait wait what am i doing presets i'm looking for presets modules rules use options presets okay we're going to try this here Module rules 9 has an unknown property presets. Ah, it needs to have that use. I don't know why prettier isn't working here. And I then think that also plugins goes here. Rule. 
tools, nine years should be one of these. String a function and object. Let's look in here again. Use options. Presets plugins. Just kind of shooting from the hip here, redoing and undoing some bad work. Okay, we're getting closer. That's a bigger, different -er error. Rule can only have one result source, provide, provided use and loaders. Uh huh. Alright, this might be a bad idea. So I have, we'll, we'll translate again here. Default config module rules exclude that. Got it. Module rules use loaders. Module rules use options presets. Use options plugins. And then we resolve main fields. So I don't know why I didn't translate it as literally before. Perhaps that should be an array. rules nine use should be one of these an empty string a function an object ah it didn't like loaders I don't loader options query So it use as loader, so it's an object with loader with options. Doesn't tell me what's wrong about it. Rules nine use should be a string, should be an instant of, instance of a function. Loader should not be a string. Sweet. We might be back in business. As a reminder, all this stuff was done to get, uh, I believe, CSS modules working. I believe. Ooh, that didn't work. Source components, gym button, gym button module CSS. Well, we might just ditch this. I think I'm just going to discard my changes and move on with what was working. Tell you what, let's stash these changes. 
with a nice link for myself. Well, I will get that link back anyway. Okay, we'll stash those changes. We'll rerun this and just should be off to the races at that point. Okay, it's back running. We don't need that anymore. We should be able to just come back to here and get our storybook and hopefully be able to inspect it and see some modules in action. Yeah, great. Okay, so we still have the CSS modules. Everything seems to be working like we would expect it to. That's great. All right. Great. Okay. So, um, let's let's move forward then. Let's see. If there's nothing left to commit. We're up and running. Um, <laughs> we 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 have some work to do here. So uh, I'm gonna start building out some of the componentry on gymnasium.com as examples. Um, I'm gonna work with the button first uh, because there's still some work to be done to make this button look like that button, for example. Um, and that's okay. Um, like there's no padding and there's no rounded corners. Uh, we'll get that in place and then maybe we'll build out something like, um, shoot, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe one of these components, uh, cause we can, we can then start to do lots of really interesting stuff. So let us start with Coming into my source here, we're going to go to the story.js for the button. We're going to get rid of this emoji contrived use case because we don't really have that as a use case. Um, but we're going to do a full width test because I know there will be cases where we want to do this. Learn more, lean more. <laughs> so this should come back great. Okay, so let's start. I'm I'm gonna do some work with the two side by side browser windows for a little while, which might get a little annoying. Uh, and I apologize, but there's there's just a little bit of this to be done. So I want to figure out. Uh, what the right amount of padding is, um, among other things, and get that into place. So we have some padding set up here. It is one one em. That's easy. I'm going to open up the CSS to the right side of it and sneeze. Hang on. And I'm back. Caught the mute button in time and everything. So we have this container button we're going to do. And actually, I found out, I found out something interesting, which is probably a good idea. Oops, man. It's going to take some time for me to get back into writing CSS and not um, CSS in JS. We've got a border radius here. And we've got some font stuff to do. Really, we can probably just copy all of these. Box shadow, text shadow, background image. Okay. 
display inline block cursor pointer I think that may be default for a button anyway border uh, font weight bold font size one text align center and we'll copy this oops there we go Do we have the right font family? Yeah. Oh, look, I already even have that there. Okay. That's great. So this button now looks like this button, and they work alongside each other. Uh, and so... Uh, okay, the one thing I wanted to show, actually, is that I didn't realize this, but with CSS modules, I can just do this, and it will... S um, do the same thing so I don't need to have a class on the button of container and it should still apply of course I could be wrong that is very strange to me let's try and reprocess this thing I don't think we can do some testing here. So let's do debugger and we'll get into classes and see what's in there. Nope. Okay. Uh, we'll go into my sources. Hmm. Oops, oops. No. Container. It's all very weird, the way this resolves. All right, well, we're going to leave that. I thought, I'm fairly certain you can use the other syntax that I had had just to scale, um, apply that to the button class, but look who might argue. OK. So we've got the button style set up. There are some hover states and click states that need to be done. So we're going to put a hover on that. We should bring this guy up. On hover. What do we change? We can probably just copy all this stuff. Yeah. Really, the only thing that changes is the background color.
that work? No. So these hover styles aren't being applied. Right, let's see how we do that. We're going to read the docs for CSS modules. Okay. All right, we're going to try something. We're going to run the storybook alongside this and see if this works for the storybook. Cuz I think there's a chance that I think there's a chance that what's happening here is that the Storybook is using these CSS modules differently than we have them set up in the Gatsby site. And maybe the Gatsby site will be successful? I'm not actually sure. We're going to find out. So, storybook is back. What port does the Gatsby site run on? 8,000. right. Oh. No. It was working all along. I maybe just needed to reload this page. Great. Great. It works in both states. We're good with that. Okay. Uh, well then, uh, finish styling button, add hover state, commit, and add story for full width button, and now we have to give the button a full width prop, so.
keep these things in alphabetical order. And And then we'll do this. I wonder if the class names can compose like this. First of all, let's see if an array of one works. It appears not to. It's not great. What is going on here? Okay, it did work. Um, man, prettier also doesn't seem to be working, which is annoying. Maybe I never set it up here. Okay, and then we're going to do full width. Naturally, I just broke everything. Okay, CSS modules, multiple classes. There's some learning to be had here. Position. No. Oh, that's interesting. But I don't love that. Let's do it the other way. That's um, that's okay. That's not super super easy to read, but I can at least explain what's going on. So here we're using a string template to say call this thing container and call it give it give it the container class no matter what and give it full width um, the full width class if it has a full width property set. That's not too bad. So, uh, we're going to add prettier to this project so that I can format all this code because it's gross. We've done some of that already. 
Maybe I just need to. Format on save, format on paste, format on type. Great. Okay, yeah, I just had to turn it on. We're going to do a, ah, should have edited. Clean everything up. prettier settings from another project. So my true single quote true and I like JSX single quote false tab width to trend and comma ES5 good okay I don't have to think about that anymore. All right, so what else can we do? Let's do a link. Oops, we're gonna do a new folder, we'll call it link. Lord knows where that went. Uh, oh, look, it's back. Okay. Save this thing. Components link. Link.js. Oh, <laughs> that's not what I wanted. Okay. Link. do like semicolons. Okay, so now we have our link component, we want to add a story for it. Ooh, what's going on here? No ES link configuration found. Bummer. We can worry about that later on. Um, Grab 
grab this. And grab that. Okay, so now we should have a link story in here with a link in it. Oop, I stopped running the thing. Add some CSS for the link. Oops, that of course goes up here. It should be renamed with a capital L. Our links may not always be in Brandon, so we're gonna we're gonna not specify that. Let's look at a link on Gymnasium. To be honest, we don't have a ton of links. These are links, but those are in the footer. That's the thing to play around with that I haven't quite done yet. Okay, let's go back to our storybook now. We'll bring this back in here. Refresh. Ooh. Ooh. Cannot resolve link in marketing source components. Spilled my beer. Sorry, but you either have no stories or none are selected somehow. Oh, dear. Well, 
Well, something's changed because we had stories mere moments ago. <sighs> what has changed? header. Oh, that's funny that there's a header component and an image component. The layout and an SEO and the source pages, 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 all this other stuff. Well, heck. Ah, there we go. Export link from link. And here we have default as link. Is freaking happening. <sighs> Prop types is not defined. Okay, in link.js. funky one to track down and we're all back okay so we gotta go to link this guy here we can give these better more capitalized names Looks like we need to give this a default prop for that too. Um, great. So on some level in our stories config we need to we need to add our base CSS stuff. Ooh, that probably doesn't need to be there twice. We need to add our base CSS stuff in here somewhere. And I think that happens in storybook. But I really don't remember. 
stories. Maybe it happens here. Because, um, well, I mean, you can tell from Gymnasium that we don't use uh, Times New Roman as the default font, for example, or whatever serif nonsense. Um, what do we use? Open Sans. Yeah. So some of these base rules should be set up, too. Um, and we can figure out how and where to do that. We have to do it in a way that works for both Gatsby and the storybook. So we're going to want to do one first and then the other. So. And actually, while I'm thinking of it, that's another good story to add. Link story, we're going to add a link without target. And... Okay, um, so let's read the docs. Let's do the slow start guide. <laughs> oh, actually. I've already done some of this. Uh, Brandon. Wherever I loaded Brandon. Fonts. I forget where where we loaded the font. Okay. There we go. Custom head tags. Preview head.html inside the storybook config directory. Okay. Goodness, thought we just did that. I thought we had done that. No? How? Oh, I see. And I was seeing the fonts because I have them installed on my machine. Yeah, okay. You may need to add different scripts or tags within the main storybook UI. This may arise when your custom webpack configuration outputs some chunks. So it looks like there's two different options to do this. Um, and I think we want to do the former. Sorry, responding to a text. Yeah, I think we're going to do the former. We're going to use our type kit um, config from Gymnasium to begin with. So I'm just going to grab that and copy it in. here and we should also do that in the beginning of the, the Gatsby project so this is just for the storybook um, I'm gonna leave myself another comment in here I 
everything in this file is uh, okay. Ooh. Great. Uh, now we want to do the same thing for the Gatsby project. So we've got a button, we've got a link, we've got a header, which is not the same as the head, the layout. No pages, index, no. None of that. Customizing HTML.js. Gatsby uses a React component to server render the head and other parts of the HTML outside of the core Gatsby application. It also uses the default value for a NoScript tag here. Most sites should use the default HTML.js shipped with Gatsby, but if you need to customize your site's HTML.js, uh, copy the default one into your source tree by running that, and then make modifications as needed. If you need to insert custom HTML into the header or footer of the page on your site, you can use HTML.js. Great. That's what we need to do then. So let's 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 not mess this stuff up. And we're going to then run this in here and run our storybook command. And now we should have a source HTML.js. Nice. This is exactly what we were looking for. It's funny though that we get head components that's great um, Custom head. Yeah, I guess I guess this is really the way to do this. It seems a little odd. Okay. So we're gonna do the same thing and put our type kit stuff here.
think that'll still work. I should really check it out though. Um, no, okay, didn't like that because that is not good JSX. So every chance is already a plugin for Gatsby to use Typekit, and maybe that's what we should be using instead. Yeah, it doesn't like that semicolon. Boy. Okay, we're, we're not going to mess with that for now. We'll figure that out when we're moving on to the Gatsby side of things. Uh, yarn storybook. One more time, we'll get the storybook up and running. Um, and I'm going to um, probably end my stream in a few minutes here. We've made loads of good progress so far. So far. <laughs> Although it looks broken. But I see it's still working. Okay, so we've got a button. We've got a full width button. Uh, we have a link. Which needs some fonts added. And we need to put some base CSS in still, which I haven't done. Okay, well that's cool. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it quits for the day. So uh, next time we pick up, we're gonna keep working on this link bit. We're gonna start moving into um, shoot. I don't know. I think I think we're maybe we'll start working with my designer Justin, uh, and we'll start working on some of the bits that um, comprise some larger components here, or just work on some of the basic typography stuff. Whatever it may be, um, we'll pick it up next week. So thanks for hanging out today. Uh, I appreciate you all watching me stream and work and code and get frustrated and learn things. Um, and I'll catch you next week. I'll be back on Tuesday afternoon, normal time, uh, 1, what is it, one thirty to 3, 1 to 3, something like that. I will see you then. Uh, until next time, you can find me on Twitter at IrreverentMike and on Twitch at the same handle, IrreverentMike. Uh, we'd love it if you subscribed and followed and did all those things, but I'm not going to sit here and beg you. All right, catch you next week. Bye, everyone.